you know, I'm all about showing the fish something different. And a lot of times that means downsizing. Uh, you think about worm fishing and swim bait fishing, there's always room to downsize and you could apply the same concept in crankbait fishing. I mean, if you look, all that shadow there, that's just, that's the ledge that comes off. And if you look at the bank ahead, there's one bluff end. There's one. You know, I never fished this spot ever. It just looked good on the map. Whenever you have a situation where there's a river kind of running or a channel running down a lake, and where a bluff, which is a channel swing, this is a 10 pound test, so I won't swing it. Oh, whoa, come here. Mm. Oh man, I just smoked that Z2 crankbait. Wherever the river channel just kind of sweeps up against the bank, creating a bluff, where that bluff continues underwater, we'll call those bluff ends, perfect spots to throw a crankbait. You just kind of set up on the end of a bluff end, cast up, grind it off the rocks, it hits the, it hits the bottom, falls into the ledge, and that's when fish bite it. And that, that's exactly what this fish did here. I only stopped here because it looked great on the map, and apparently there's fish here. So, gosh, fish got it. Let me get the pliers on them. Okay. All right, that was a fun one. See you, buddy. Just knowing that lineup and knowing that cast is, I mean, that is huge. You know, without, you know, 360 imaging or forward facing sonar, you're left with just a map. So really it tells you, I like to have it in a head up orientation. Um, some guys like it north up. I like a head up orientation. That way on my map here, it always shows me where the front of the boat is. So you could kind of see here, that ledge, that drop off, that bluff end is at, at about a seven o'clock position from where the boat is. So that's where the cast I'm gonna make, about seven o'clock to where the boat is back here. But with 360 imaging, I could really pinpoint that seven o'clock cast and I know exactly what's down there. Boulders, a little bit of sticks, but here on this map, all you have is topo lines, but that's totally okay. That's, that gives you direction on where to make that cast with the crankbait. And talking about line size while cranking, first of all, fluorocarbon is, is gonna be your best cranking line because it sinks, because it keeps that crankbait down on the bottom, because there's less stretch, and because it's very, very abrasion resistant. You know, the way they, they wrap rods nowadays, I mean, rod technology has come a, a long ways and just in the last couple of decades, but just about everyone I know on tour has done away with, you know, cranking with mono or throwing reaction baits on monofilament. So I think it's very beneficial to throw straight fluorocarbon as you're cranking um, because today's rods, you know, this is a, a, a graphite rod that is very, very sensitive, but it's very moderate. You can see it bends all the way down to the first guide here. No longer do we have to use that real stretchy monofilament. We could use that no stretch fluorocarbon um, with today's technology and rod building and making that rod strong, light, but also, you know, very moderate and whippy. And that's what's needed when you're throwing small treble hooks like, you know, like this finesse crankbait here. That's a good one. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Dude, I'm talking about right. Oh God, I got two on, I got two on. Oh, he came off. I had two on there. Man, I had two. That's the second time this year. I've, my whole fishing career, I never had two on until like this month and last month. Oh yeah. That's a fun fish. Mm-hmm, okay, all right. It's a fun crankbait fish. A lot of times too, they'll nudge it. You'll get, you'll chin hook them like that. And that just means they're pushing it down into the bottom. You know, here's the thing about, uh, you know, finesse fishing. Uh, you know, when a finesse fishing comes to mind, most people think spinning rod and three inch worms, drop shot, light line. But really to me, finesse fishing or downsizing 
can be in a worm, it could be in a swim bait, and it can be in a crankbait like this instance here. So the real challenge to downsize in a crankbait, this is a you know two inch version, um, is castability. And you know you need a crankbait that's got a awesome weight transfer system. You know longer cast equals more depth, equals more deflection, equals more bass. So whether it's a six inch worm going down a three inch worm or a six inch mag draft going to a three inch spark shad, I'm always looking to downsize to get more bites. And here's the thing about downsizing and finesse fishing is whether the bite is wide open or whether the bite is tough as nails, you can always get a bass bite downsizing baits. There's another one, that's a good one. Mm, little guy. See, they are squashing that Z2. And again, this is just a, it's a I was running down the lake and I, I spotted a bluff end on my Lake Master map here. As soon as I dropped the 360, oh, quick release. Dropped the 360 imaging in the, in the water. I knew exactly where that bluff end was. It's off the bank. You visually can't see that drop off, but you know, with 2D sonar, 360 imaging sonar, and a crankbait to tell you, okay, I'm casting to the right. It's too shallow, it's too shallow, it's grinding, it's grinding. As soon as it comes off that bluff end, boom, that's when the bites are happening. That's when you set your waypoint, that's when you set spot lock, make that repetitive cast with a crankbait, and those lineups are key, key, key into weighing those you know better than average bags and you could continue to bang on them cast after cast after cast throw up on top of the bluff end as it comes off that edge Don't, there's another one so that's where we're at right now <laughs> see if i catch another one and the beauty of this crankbait here it feels like a square build like balsa crankbait but it's down there in eight to ten feet of water it doesn't have those real loud obnoxious rattles either so it's just a real high frequency tight there's another bite there's one Oh, it came off. Just a high frequency wobble to it. And again, it's like a, it reminds me, oh yeah, yeah. Reminds me of, there's one. Yep. It's like five casts in a row. And honestly, I don't think, you know, you may be able to throw a worm in there and get a bite, but that's just, that's real slow. You know, and there's just no better way to find a, school of fish than just you know using a fast moving bait especially on these bluff ends um you know you need something that grinds the bottom comes off the comes off the bottom falls into the abyss and that's when those fish eat it when it you know when it uh, disconnects with the bottom there and this crankbait is doing work down there i want to keep getting in there because there's a whole bunch there 